Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the TCS UWT100 remote. I'm just now getting to the point where I could set something like this up, so I'll show you what my experience was with this, and you'll see whether this is an upgrade you want to make or even a system now that you want to apply to your layout. So let's get started right now. Now, in full disclosure, this is not the first time that I've taken this out of the box. Usually I unbox things for the first time on my channel, but this I needed more information on, I needed to play with to make sure I knew what I was doing kind of right off the bat. So we're going to slide this out and to get it started here. Now you'll be able to see exactly what it looks like the first time opening it because everything I put back the way it was, but inside train control systems manual and lanyard and a diagram foam the remote itself and the batteries and that's all there is to it so let's check out this system here we have the manual and the lanyard manual looks like it's about 15 pages of information from simply installing the batteries to adding a Wi-Fi wi network and I'll kind of show you that here because because I played with this I already added the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi network and it did go through kind of a system setup that we'll be skipping for this video but let me just tell you I didn't open this manual and I was able to add the Wi-Fi network and get to operating without any problems so the user-friendly par portion of this uh, of this remote man I can't talk today <clears throat> is really good um, to the point that I didn't need the manual to get this started and I felt like anybody could kind of do that without any problems I didn't even know how to power it on so I was just kind of punching around buttons here and all of a sudden it, it lights up after you put the batteries in and it says press 2 to start another thing I really like is there's no screw post for the batteries that just gets annoying there's a little um, tab on the back you can see but right now my layout is not powered up so there's no Wi-Fi found but the user friendliness level of this I mean thumb wheel to scroll why am I seeing this you know it's gonna walk you through pretty much the setup to where I don't think you need the manual so I'm going to go ahead and power up the layout and show you what you need to make an NCE system work with this controller. And when I power that up, we'll talk about that. Okay, as you can see, I have the NCE system. It's peeking out back there. I've applied power to the layout, so you may hear some sounds. But right here is the module that I'm using for Wi-Fi. There are a few different options and such. This is the Wi-Fi tracks module, very simple to set up. It came with instructions on how to interface with your NCE system. And it was essentially plug and play. So that's the system that I chose. As you can see, I'm still working on the layout, so I'm not going to button up all the wiring until after the layout is ready uh, for fascia and such, which is a long way off. But So it's not pretty, but it is present and that Wi-Fi tracks basically creates a Bluetooth signal or I'm sorry a Wi-Fi signal to your layout and what that does is then enables different systems for use you know I've got um, apps on my iPad and such that I can use but this <clears throat> we're gonna escape out of this and now you can see that it's connected to well it said it for a second but it was connected to the Wi-Fi tracks so now I'm basically ready to operate I'll show you what I could find out on my own without looking at the manual um, entering a locomotive you can see the little areas that correspond with the buttons below 
so you can recall a locomotive that way but I found this little locomotive button here and I hit that and then you type your locomotive now for three I noticed you just need to hit three but for anything else that you have if you've got it four digit address you're just gonna put in four digit address so 977 for example is a locomotive that I'm going to put on the layout here um, but that is a Broadway limited locomotive and that operated fine but let me go back to three here and put in three and show you what happens because I've got two locomotives I haven't programmed yet that I just pulled out of the box over here and sometimes I'm really lazy and I put um, locomotives I just leave them on three and run them together if they're the same brand and stuff especially when right when they get out of the box so I'll hit eight which is start up for those these are Bowser uh, SD30 Ecos so all of your functions 0B headlight for example comes on 6 is ditch light comes on so that's what I could figure out on my own how to run locomotives set this system up obviously install the batteries no problem so functions 1 through 9 I could figure out on my own <clears throat> and then I kind of needed to get into the manual to go over some other stuff, which I'll show you. One thing I do want to go over with you in the manual is text entry. I did struggle with that just a little bit, but the thumb wheel uh, is where you kind of scroll through the text and then the buttons below the screen directly correspond to changing text size and such. So. That is how you enter text. You can always pause this if you want to read more. Another thing I want to show you is the emergency stop. There's three stages some DCC systems will support. Stage one, you just press the e-stop e button and it brings your locomotive to a stop. Uh, press it quickly again, it stops all locomotives on the layout and then third time actually turns layout power completely off and the last thing is managing and adding consists I'll let you see that there it's pretty easy yard mode and latching as well pretty easy now speed adjustment I will show you an on-screen demonstration because it's easy there's throttle reset as well so let's look at speed and how that's handled on this controller real quick. <laughs> on previous DCC videos I have shown the consisting process on controllers. This time I'm going to skip it and just let the people that are advanced enough to do consisting in the hobby read up on that uh, from the manual directly so they can see because it tends to confuse my younger or more uh, novice viewer. But Let's talk about speed real quick. You have your thumb wheel. And you can adjust whatever you want from one up. Or on the left here. Well, let's start on the yeah, the left. There's double arrows going up and down. Those go in increments of 10. So now your locomotive will start moving at the speed of 10. And if you didn't like that for some reason, you just go back or hit your thumb wheel to go down and they're gonna stop on the right increments of one so you have a choice between push button operations and thumb wheel operations for your controller okay let's say you want to go past function nine you hit the up button which is considered the shift button a little tiny one is gonna appear right here my camera really doesn't like the controller, so the flickering is not on the actual controller there. And then you've got functions 11 through 19. You hit it again. Now you've got functions 21 through 29. 
technically usually 28 on these. You hit it again, you're back to normal. So say I wanted function 28, I'd hit it twice till I see the little two, and I'd hit 28. I'm gonna hit 21, because I don't really know what these are programmed to. Sometimes regular functions will do crazy things to your locomotive, but. So that is how you access functions above nine. Very, very simple as well. Direction is handled by hitting the little forward and reverse arrow button right here under the thumb wheel. Now I'm in reverse. You can see it clearly in reverse as the arrow is changed on the controller as well. And there go my locomotives in reverse. Other things on the controller you want to be aware of. You have your Wi-Fi signal right here. It's going to go pretty far. I've tested it up to over 50 feet in the home, no problem. Battery level right next to that. Functions when you're 0 through 9 are going to show up here and disappear as you take them off. You're about to shut down the locomotive. It'll take off 8. And F0 will take off the little L for lights. You do have a shortcut horn and bell here. Uh, the bell is going to automatically ring with the horn on this model. So then you have a shortcut for a headlight as well. So since it's in reverse, you're not going to see the headlight, but headlight now on and off. Changing the locomotive to a different number. You just hit the last locomotive. It'll recall last one you put in right up there on the left and I was messing around too much and I selected a different locomotive that's not even there but again locomotive button down here so we'll go back to three enter and now we're back to our locomotives that are programmed in at three emergency stop button I talked about earlier right here enter button right there question button is pretty neat it uh, helps you through whatever you're dealing with uh, it's kind of like a guide so it's gonna show you what's going on um, it's just like a help button so main menu is the three lines right here Recall operations consisting network operations about this throttle flashlight. Let's see what that does. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? It's a neat little setting. So all these cool um, options here in this very, very user friendly. One of the most user friendly things I've seen in a long time in DCC, which is far overdue. Like when I was first in to model railroading, it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> so I was like, what am I doing? And I had an Atlas three function, you know, system. So uh, consisting right here, go in there and add locomotive to consist, to consist, and then clear consist and view current consist and then consist functions. So again, even that was user friendly enough that I didn't have to interpret what I showed you in the manual earlier. So really cool system. Highly recommend it. Uh, it's not just for NCE. It is for a lot of different systems that are Bluetooth enabled. I think MRC, if you have a Wi-Fi module, um, there's Digitrax Wi-Fi, you know, almost every system, ESU has a Wi-Fi. So be sure to check TCS's website for what it's compatible with and what you need to make it run. I'll put the link in the description. But this has been a look and review of the TCS train control systems UWT100 DCC controller. Very, very cool. Very, very user-friendly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on the channel. Take care.